Hello, Happy New Year, and welcome to the first Reservoir Red Dogs of 2019. Thanks for all your emails, and don't forget you can continue to get in touch with the show uh, through email, rrd1865 at outlook.com. You can tweet us at rrd1865, and if you could subscribe on iTunes and leave a review, it helps other Forest fans find it. Thanks for all your tweets and follows, and I'm delighted to welcome back Paul McGregor into the new year. Welcome back, Paul. Hello, mate. How are you doing? I'm very good. Well, m- mainly, how are you? Because listeners might not know from, from the chipper sound in your voice, but you, you've not been too well this week. Yeah, I've had, um, <laughs> I've had a problem with my back for the past few... It was uh, playing in a charity match. I, f- I fell on my backside. Uh, I scored, mind you. Um, uh, yeah, jumping in for a goal, and I landed on my coccyx, and it's like, it's, it's come and gone, the pain. But I've, I've got full mobility in that, but I, the pain got so bad yesterday that I ended up in A&E for oh, seven man. hours. So, uh, yeah, it was no good. But there's nothing wrong with me. So, you know, the usual warrior McGregor. But it's good that you, you passed the last-minute fitness test and are available to podcast today, and we're, we're very grateful for it. I did, yeah. I didn't have the best sleep again. But, um, uh, yeah, I'm all right. I'm, I'm fighting through it, Matt. You know me. So what happened in a e Well, <laughs> well, I was there for seven hours. It's torturous. Oh, mate. I mean, the screening, they should have two rooms, shouldn't they? For ex players, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you play for Forest, but Come honestly, the 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 sights you see, as people know, the sights you see in there, and what what they what the staff have to put up with, good grief. From you mainly, from yeah. Well, I was kicking off. I was like, do you know? Who I? No, <laughs> my wife was like, no. Um, but someone did know who you were. Well, it was funny, yeah, because they obviously they kept they keep calling your name out over the uh, the system and that. And uh, some some guy when I came back from having bloods, and I'm I'm bad with needles anyway, so Whoa. I was a bit wobbly. And uh, more wobbly than usual. And a guy's come, a guy's come over and he's gone, all right, Macca, how are you doing? Love the podcast. Oh, yes. So, yeah, it was great. So there's me wobbling around and some, some guy's telling me that he loves the podcast. Now, funnily enough, his name was Tony Thomas. So hello, Tony. Hello, Tony. My, my A&E buddy. He was a lovely fella. But he was, uh, he was trying to tell me about a different podcast that Norm had been on recently and trying to pass it off as this one. I didn't have the heart to tell him it was a different one. Oh, so maybe he doesn't like the podcast. He does like it. <laughs> okay, yeah. well, I don't know. He says he listened to that one, this one, and uh, I think it was Atletico Mints as well. We are, oh, Atletico Mints is a cracker. Brilliant. And we yeah. are trying to get Norm on, and he's, he said he will come on at some point, which is yeah. sort the dates out. Um, our guest, our first guest of the year, could not be a better guest. Someone we've wanted to have on for a very long time and delighted. One of the greatest managers to ever manage Forest. Played for the Reds 87 times, scored three goals. Should have been four, but we'll come on to that. <laughs> <laughs> it's the one and only Paul Hart. Paul, welcome to the show. Thank you very much. I feel very emotional seeing you here today. You you gave us one of the greatest seasons in my lifetime in 2002, 2003. We'll we'll talk about that in a bit. But you played for Forest. I did. Initially, you signed in 1983 to replace Willie Young. Willie Young, who of course went on to own the Bramcote Manor pub. I'm not sure. Did he? Did any of you ever go there? I used to go to the Manor quite a bit. Yeah, that's Willie's old gaff, man. I didn't go to the uh, pub, but I did go to his... Uh, equestrian centre and then latterly his uh, kennels oh wow yes but interestingly enough you know talking about the NHS and the strain it's under you know that they still look after people with nothing wrong with them (laughs) (laughs) Paul McGregor is the biggest when is this government going to wake up to the blight (laughs) to the blight of Paul McGregor (laughs) big picture of my face on the bus (laughs) Um, so initially signing for Forest in 1983 playing for the great Brian Clough what was your initial impression of him as a manager? Oh, well, I can tell the story of how I was signed. Oh, great. Because um, I was playing for Leeds United and we'd been relegated a year before. And so the end of the season came and we were pl- the very last game of the season, we were playing Rotherham at uh, Ellen Road. As luck would have it, Alan Hill was at the game. Oh, great. Watching a young centre-half, I, I just can't think of his name, but a young centre-half playing for Rotherham. And the story goes, because Alan, Alan told me later, he went back and said, look, we're in Europe next year. If you want to do well in Europe, you need to go and sign Paul Hart. And so on the Monday, I got a phone call from Eddie Gray. Eddie Gray was then the manager of Leeds United. Two days after the season finished, and there was a reserve game at Ellen Road that night, and he said, there's a club in for you in the first division. Uh, would you like to meet them? I said, who is it? Obviously, Eddie says, well, don't you know? Because they think everybody gets tapped. (laughs) And it was absolutely, I hadn't got a clue. And he said, uh, Nottingham Forest, I've gone, wow. He said, Brian Clough's coming to the game, uh, come to Ellen Road tonight to meet him. So I I bowled along, knocked on the door of Eddie Gray's office. Come in. 
as I walked in and, and Ken Smales was sat there with, uh, with the gaffer. And uh, so I said, oh, hello, Mr. Clough. And he says, hey. <laughs> 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 hey, son, don't call me Mr. Clough, call me Brian. And at that point, I've gone, no. <laughs> <laughs> That's not going to happen. No, <laughs> That's not going to happen. So he sat down and he said, I've seen your salary here. And I said, if you think you're getting that, you can think again. <laughs> oh, my God. So, so he said, but, but this is, I'm not leaving this office until you sign. <laughs> and it's, that was a, obviously an offer I couldn't turn down. So I took a 10 grand a year drop in salary and signed, you know. For wow. Me. And I had the best two years. I, I, I've been very lucky, the football clubs I've been at. You know, I've got great memories of Stockport County, Blackpool, Leeds three times, Nottingham Forest yeah. three times. You know, absolutely... Uh, you know, for me, I think I've been dead lucky, you know, the experiences that I have. But uh, the camaraderie that existed at Nottingham Forest with the, the boys that were there, created by the manager, was unbelievable. Friends now, you know, I still see Viv every, uh, every you know, he lives in Manchester. I go and see Viv, we, we, we speak. Robbo play tennis, tennis school. <laughs> uh, we started about 11 years ago, 12 years ago in uh, David Lloyd. Is that down at the David Lloyd? Yeah, we started... Robbo came down from Scotland, from Celtic, and he was not working, and I wasn't working at the time. So we went out one day and had a couple, and um, <laughs> so, so Robbo, Robbo was outside the picture and piano, and he was like... <laughs> <laughs> and I said, I, said, I said, mate, I said, I think we've got to do something. <laughs> and an intervention. So we, so, we, so we started playing tennis, and, and it's still going now. Oh, good on you for, for I saw him down there the other week. To, did you? Yeah, I was. I had a meeting in there the other day, and yeah. uh, he was just sat rattling through a rattling through a breakfast, trying yeah. to butter his toast. <laughs> and uh, Liam, Liam was there. Liam O'Kane was yeah, there. Liam, yeah, in. Liam was there. Liam was a big part of it. Now there's there's a few other people joined in. Bertels comes along now and again. You know, uh, I bet he's the best tennis player. He's good he? at everything. Isn't yeah, he? he is good at everything. I've got to be honest. He's a nuisance. Yeah, we hate him. <laughs> It's really cool on the on the occasions where we've been out for a drink after this with ex players and a few more come along. As a fan, it's exactly what you would want to happen. You'd want people mm. to still be in touch. And we've been down where is it Copper in West Bridgeford yeah, yeah. with Bertles and Robbo That's and that. It, yeah. And people just can't believe what they're saying. walking by <laughs> of an afternoon. And there's these legends just sat there, you know, having a coffee or something. John O'Hare. John O'Hare. John O'Hare, Ian O'Hare. Bowyer and, and Bowyer. Clarkie. Yeah. And it's yeah. incredible when you just sat yeah. there with these Giants of football, yeah. and it all still—it's the sort of thing that, as a kid, you would naively think, "I bet they're all friends, and I bet they all still talk to each yeah. other." I, I think the best thing about footballers at Nottingham Forest, you know, I don't think I can ever remember anybody getting a book ahead of themselves. Mm. You know what I mean? They, they were humble and ordinary. So he recruited as much the person as the footballer. You mm. say that, but we've had Nigel Jemson on the podcast. <laughs> <and> <laughs> Nigel, <laughs> Nigel, there are lad. anomalies. <laughs> Nigel's a good lad. He, oh, he's brilliant. He's yeah. pretty, he's, he was I, great, I, I wasn't say, he? I said that as a friend of the show. Yeah, he was, uh, yeah. He, he was, he was very funny. So you, you come to Forest in 83, three years after Forest have won the European Cup. And that period, really, in between the European Cup successes and then the sort of cluffy spell at Wembley in the late 80s, is seen as a relative slump. But actually, in, in, in 83, 84, Forest finished third in the league, get to the semi-final of the UEFA Cup, and obviously a cheated uh, against Anderlecht. I mean, at the time... Did it feel like the club was going through a transition or did it oh, still feel relatively successful? No, it did. It didn't when I signed because nobody said anything. It was just like, you know, but we went away, I think four times we went to the Middle East in that season to get money to help pay for... Uh, I like promotion salaries, tools, salaries and all that. No, 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 no. It was definitely to, to get paid. Yeah. So that it alleviated the pressure. When um, you say you went, the squad? Yeah. In the season, so, four so, times. So listen, so listen. So we played on a Saturday. I remember one game, right? We played Arsenal on a Saturday. We flew out. We, we, we drove down to Heathrow at six o'clock in the morning, oh, the man. next morning. Flew out to Iraq, right? <laughs> so, As you do. To so, the tourist service. So here's the, here's the thing. So I got wind that we were going to Iraq. So I went to see the gaffer. I said, boss, I said, I'm a little bit concerned about Iraq because at that point they were still fighting the Iranians in Basra That's so right. the Iranians were actually on Iraqi soil and I said uh, I said do you know they're still fighting he says yeah bring your tin helmet <laughs> 
So, oh my so we went word. out. So here's a, here's a schedule for one of those trips. So we went out. We played on the Monday <laughs> in Baghdad. Yeah. And the Thursday, <coughs> flew back on the Thursday. We had to st- overnight stay in Jordan in Amman, and then got the flight back on Friday to Heathrow home. So we went, we played twice, no training, uh, and we played again in the first division on the Saturday. You flew back and on that the fr- was, and that was the season we finished third and got to the um, what do you call it? Wow! You wait for the UEFA Cup, Cup semi final. Yeah. I mean, it does make you wonder what would have been possible had that not have been going on. You must have been exhausted. Did you feel tired? Uh, no. no. Oh, so actually, there's only there's only about if you look at the squad picture that season, there's there's only about eighteen people on the on the on the <laughs> good old you know, days. And there was <laughs> we no signings because because really we were we were skinned. It's mad to be skint three years after winning the European Cup twice. Well, I think they built the stand. I think that... Uh, the that executive stand, stand I yeah. I think the executive stand had been built, and I think a couple of deals may have gone slightly all right, you know, a couple of transfers. So let's talk about Anderlecht then. I mean, it's a frustrating period in Forest history. It's an infuriating miscarriage of justice, and we, we had so many emails about it. You score against Anderlecht, there's absolutely nothing wrong with it, uh, and the referee waves it away and, and, and goes to a goal kick. I mean, it's a headed goal, isn't it, from, yeah. from you? How much do you remember about the goal itself? Do you remember scoring it? Yeah. Interesting enough, when we arrived, we used to go out, fly out on the Monday. Yeah. So we play on the Saturday, fly out on the Monday, and then we're in the hotel, train Tuesday and, and get ready. Unusually for the manager, we got the English papers and he, he'd had a little bit of a dig at the referee. You know, I hope this... He, he knew he was Spanish, a, a Spanish referee and he said, I hope... I think he'd had some problems with a Spanish referee in the past. Yeah. And he said, I'm just hoping he's honest. And, and we've all gone, because he never, ever really had a pop at referee. And yeah. we Famously. Were, and we weren't, allowed to, we weren't allowed to protest against the referee. Yeah. It just wasn't done. It wasn't in our DNA. And, um, and I said to the boys, I said, I've got to be honest. I said, I just hope it's not the same Spanish referee that I had two years ago in... Uh, a tournament playing for Leeds United against Real Madrid, and uh, it was televised all over Spain. This tournament and Real Madrid had to win, and they sent two of our players off. Uh, wow! I said, I just hope it's not that geezer that we had at, um, uh, in Spain. Yeah. And uh, as we come out of the dressing rooms, you know, for the first time, you see you see the referee. It's him. Oh, it's no. him. It's him. But your heart it's, sank. The, it's the same fella. <sighs> We've got, got a corner, but I don't know, not very long to go. So I'm being marked, and I, I just take him under the ball. You know, he went yeah. all over the place, and I bounced it, you know. Boom, it flew off the ground. I, this is how I imagine it. I'm not quite sure if it happened this way, because it was a long time ago. <laughs> but I know, I know it went past Ian Bowyer. And um, on the film, you see the goalkeeper about yeah. to berate his defenders. Yeah. And he's really going to, he's having a pop. And then there's a whistle. So I'm not saying, I'm not quite sure how many seconds, you know, but there's a massive delay in, in football terms. And the goalkeeper is going, that's us done. He's absolutely So shocked. none of their players are going, referee, no. referee? No, no. Because you know on the pitch, uh, don't Oh, yeah, you? absolutely. Yeah. They, they, they got pulled out. And because we, we, I think you see one or two players running towards the referee, but generally we're not giving him a hard time. No. But the mm. gaffer after the game was completely... Silent, you know, got changed. Just, just we got on the plane. He never said a word. He knew, you know, he knew something distasteful had happened. I'm sure, you know, and um, and then all these years later, you know, through people being blackmailed, yes, it comes out. The owner of uh, Anderlecht had to bring a court case against his blackmailer, and it all came out. We've got so many emails about this. Uh, Keith Bark says. Um, what happened to the lawsuit that the players were going to bring against Anderlecht? Yeah. Sort of went dead. Uh, apparently, uh, this was this was all started as I went in there. I, I went into Nottingham Forest again as academy coach. About a year or so afterwards, th- this momentum got going. I think uh, Gary Bertels was uh, a driving force behind it. Uh, apparently, Belgian law moves unbelievably slowly, yeah. and it got it's got bogged down in bogged process, down, and then interest Wayne's. diminished yeah hmm. damn it um thomas newton um picked up on something that you said that it, is it true uh, that you'd had the same ref in a previous game 
uh, for Leeds. We we now yep. know that 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 is yep. uh, we know that that is true. Um, uh, Scott says, um, were the Anderlecht players in on the cheating? Uh, I don't think so, because it didn't. Uh, they were a good side, you know. No getting away from that. I would say not. But Frank Arneson definitely knew something had gone on. Uh, I hope I can't get sued for that. Oh no! I think you've been very. I think you've been very diplomatic. Well, given we're going to find that, out. Given how, I mean, it must be so. You know, Forrester won the European Cup twice in, in you know, by 1980. Three years later, you know, a major European semi-final. You score a goal. There's absolutely nothing wrong with it. You know, at some point, you must have been dreaming of winning a European trophy in a Forest shirt. Well, as a footballer, I've never won a medal, so that was a. I mean, we we would have played Spurs in the final, and. If, you know, we, we all get paid well in football and relatively speaking, you know, I'm not, you know, uh, my life has been a great life, uh, but medals is what it's about yeah. and, uh, for me and for most of my era. And I'm sure for the top players, you know, it's about, you know, getting medals. It, it reflects what you've done. Yeah. And um, that was the sadness I felt, you know, that you know, on a selfish, from yes. a selfish point of view. Can well, I go you, back to something? Sorry, very quickly. Yeah. Something intrigued me when you said you signed when when you signed uh, for Forest from Leeds. Um, Hilly had said that if you're going to be in Europe next season, which we are, uh, you need to sign this guy. What was it about your style of play that was it more European? Or in what sense was it more European? Why why that se- that sentence stuck well, out to me? I'm, I'm, well, I, I think I, I was thirty at that that point, uh, just turned thirty, uh, so. Centre backs, I think, looking at centre backs, you know, you, uh, twenty-five to thirty-two. I was uh, within that time. I could have probably played for England. I could have. I was all right. You know, I was. I was experienced. I knew my way around the pitch. I knew what was happening. You couldn't play at Leeds United without being able technically, no. technically very good. So I was. That was always a strength. You know, uh, and he liked people who edited it. So. <laughs> I, I, I fitted that one, you know, and I made sure I was on the left going away from the Trent end, and then and on the right going further away from it. Because, because you know, you know those little lads. You Which should, ones? You, should, <laughs> you know those little lads nicked in front of you. You think you've got it like that? Yeah. Nick a header like that. Yeah. Center off, <laughs> center half. He never called me Paul. <laughs> he, ne- he never called me Artie. He's a center half. You're like a seagull with cement wellies. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear! Brilliant. So it was. It was um, uh, so I, I, I probably appealed, and we were very counter-attacking then. You know, so sometimes the first challenge I got was on the 18-yard box, so I had to either be a good defender yeah. or head it there, and then we break from there. You know. <laughs> And uh, and we had Bertels then, and uh, who was unbelievable. And Peter Davenport, and phew, yeah, yeah that's what a side pace as well. Yeah. But your pace, you know, so you get it sometimes, and you'd look, you know, it was a bit tight because you know you you're only receiving it there, and you'd look to put it in the channels, you know, and if you hit one a bit too far, you know, don't chase that sh. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. Oh, God. oh, wow. I can hear it now. Brilliant. It's a really good impression of him. Oh, dear. No, there's, there's nobody. Uh, I, I've got to be honest. When, when, I, when I started coaching, so I had a manager, I, I had a player coach job at Notts County and a manager job. And then I went into a youth team coaching at, at uh, Leeds United, you know, with Howard Wilkinson. And I hadn't coached young people at that point. And I, and I was thinking, where how, where do I start with this? You know, uh, and you know what I did? I took the principles, uh, Brian Clough's principles, Nottingham Forest, and I looked at what they did. Don't argue with referees. Yeah. Don't pull shirts. Don't feign injury. Yeah. Don't tackle. You know, unless you tackle properly. Uh, head the ball. Uh, be polite. Say good morning. Yes, please. No, thank you. So I took all those. I said, I might be a useless coach, but they're going to be well mannered. <laughs> but we've discussed so, that, haven't we? Yeah. yeah. The, 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 I I used I got the feeling that they were raising young men as yeah. well as young footballers it at is. Forest, and that yeah. that was that was one of the things that I took with me and take with me to this day. So you talk about <laughs> your, your, your philosophy as a as, as a coach and as a manager. Obviously, then 
I mean, just one of the most remarkable periods in recent Forest history. Well, let's talk about your return to Forest as a youth coach. Dave Bassett brings you back. Um, so at that time, Forest had obviously been promoted and then come down again. Um, what was your relationship with Bassett like? Brilliant. He was funny. Uh, Mike Kelly. Mike, yeah. Uh, and, uh, oh gosh, you see, my memory's going... Um, he was the manager of Malmo, Bobby Houghton. Yes. And Bobby Houghton. And they were funny. Uh, uh, we, it was just like back at school, like they <laughs> cut your socks up and, and put put uh, shampoo in them and, and all that in your shoe. You'd, you'd, you'd be driving and then all of a sudden you put your foot on the brake and <laughs> all this shampoo would come through your toes and... <laughs> What's going on? <laughs> and, uh, and, and and you'd even do the manager. So so you you'd do Harry and all that sort of stuff. And and they'd they'd put tape on the on the phones. And they'd be going, hello, hello. <laughs> and, and you, who's that? <laughs> oh, it, they, they were great fun. It, it was really funny. I interviewed him years ago for Talk Sport, Dave Bassett. And, yeah. uh, so it must have been awful managing Pierre Van Oudonk and whatnot. And he goes, no, 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 no. He goes, to be fair to Pierre, you know, to be fair to Pierre, he was the biggest <laughs> I ever met. <laughs> <laughs> he was so funny. He is, he is a funny man. And, and he uh, loved his time at Forest. Oh, yeah. Well, when, when he left, when he left, I mean, we could have been, in my opinion, uh, probably like West Brom, you know, yeah. a rebound team. Because Harry was used to his staff were used to promotions and they knew how to get promotions. It was quite yeah. obvious the season they went up, how, you know, organised they were. Yeah. And it was a different type of forest team, I think, we've been used to. No, no, it was very, I thought it was a very pragmatic, yeah. you know, solid. Yeah. And they got enough ability on the peripheries to, to really, yeah. you know, put the quality in. Um, but, um, uh, and I thought we, we would be a rebound sign. When, when he left, I think we were about, Seven hundred and fifty thousand in the black, and and then ultimately within two years we were at twenty five yeah. million in the yeah. red. You know, yeah. and um, that was a sad thing. But we were, you know, I was working solidly with the uh, with the academy, and we were recruiting well, and and we had some good kids. Not off, yeah. Um, well, you won the you won the title with the under nineteens. Yep. And so in terms of the players that you had in your squad then, quite a few of them went on to then play for you when you came back as, as first team manager. I, I've always looked at youth development as not so much an opportunity for me, yeah. as an opportunity for children, kids, children, you know, because they work with down to eight years of age. And, and that's the way me and my staff, whoever works for me, that's the way I look at it. So it's not about uh, personal recognition, it's about doing the best, teaching the habits so that all the way down the line, the same disciplines are in, the same principles of play, same throw-ins, same free kicks. Yes. So every move, if you're going to move the kid, a young boy, on yeah. to challenge him, so he goes and plays at a higher age group, which is the, which is the way to progress in, in my book. Yes. They get in the same, envi the, the same environment. It was even down to teaching the staff to put the kit out in the same way. So, wow. So every step they go, I've seen that before. Yes. This is not quite the challenge. It's I was comfortable, expecting. isn't it? It's comfortable. Yeah. But the challenge is there, mm. you know, and, and they say, you're doing well. Let's have a look here, here, you know. And you have to back your judgment. Yeah. So by the time I became manager, it was quite obvious that I'd, you know, I'd been shouting my mouth off about this lot. I, you know, I had to blame. <laughs> you replaced David Platt. One of the strange threads <laughs> that has emerged on doing this podcast over the last two seasons is the amount of people that played for Platt really respected what you tried to do at Forest. And that's been a... Something I'd never heard as a fan before. I mean, what was your perspective on, on Platt's reign? Uh, I think ultimately you, you, you're judged on recruitment. Yeah. And I'm not sure um, the detail was in the recruitment. You know, three Italians that came in were highly paid and, and not very successful. So yeah. you, you get, you know, looked at. But he, but he did give people... You know, young our young players uh, a start. So let's talk about your, your time. I mean, the, the one season obviously that really stands out is the two thousand two two thousand three season, which was such a hopeful, amazing, confident. I mean, it it really brought life and colour back to the Forest Ground. And I remember so many 
amazing. The players were great. Everything about it was perfect, apart from the fact that we didn't get promoted, really. Just as a, as a question from a fan, I remember that all that season, constantly chanting, hearty, give us a wave, hearty, oh, yeah. hearty, give us a wave. As a manager, is that, does that become slightly frustrating? What, give us a wave? Yeah. Oh, no. I, I, I was managing Crystal Palace after, a long time after Nottingham Forest, and I came back for the first time. Uh, we were trying to, we were fighting relegation at the yeah. time, and it ended up in the last day, if you remember, at Sheffield Wednesday. That's and right. It, Again, a fantastic football club. But we played Nottingham Forest at the city ground. And after about 15 minutes, I started, uh, 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 we love you, oh, do you? <laughs> gone, are they meaning me? And it was like the whole ground. Wow. Uh, oh, stood up, and I'm stood there right on my own, you know, yeah. feeling a right nugget. <laughs> and, and I've gone, oh my God. And I didn't know whether, I was like, I don't... You know, I didn't know what to do, and I'm thinking, oh, my God, that's unbel... I've never, ever yeah. witnessed or felt anything like that. It was just amazing. Incredible. And, you know, just incredible, you know. It was absolutely unbelievable. And, oh, it was a real pleasure. And and the football that we played... Oh, it was fantastic. But, but it was like, you know, <laughs> Darren Ward, who kicked it all off. You yeah, know, yeah. Uh, and Darren was... A, I recognised Darren as a great striker of the ball. Yeah. But he was he he come from Notts County and 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 at Nottingham Forest and it was all one way. He yeah. could strike it beautifully. It was like crisp and sweet, yeah. you know, and it went straight. And I said, so I thought well, he can he can do it, yeah. you know. But our keepers had to go laterally and diagonally, yeah. you know. And I remember the first season. I said I said to everybody, this is going to be a bit of a roller coaster because we had an awful lot of players there that. Ultimately, would have to move on to. Mm. To I had an idea. I knew I had no budget because my my brief was to bring in four million a year, reduce right. the wage bill by four million, and and be, remain competitive. That was that was what it was, and I, I achieved all that. Yeah. Well, you were kind but, of in a perfect position to do that from yeah. your, from your groundwork. Well, that's right. So so all that I knew all that was there ready, and uh, but I had to, you know, make sure we stayed in the division. Uh, and we'd be facing administration at Christmas of that first year, and we let JJ go. Yeah, I remember to Newcastle, five million Newcastle. quid. I ultimately six million because we had a sell-on to go to. Oh, excellent! Uh, uh, and I got. Uh, um, I remember Nigel saying when they came in at a million, I was dealing with Bobby Robson, and I said no, nah, no. Nah. And Nigel says, "Take it, take it." I said, "No, take it, a million. Are you joking?" So <laughs> we got it up to six million and all that. Wow! Sort of. So, and he had to go because of the funds. The, yeah. You know what you talked about, and um, I remember one game at home in that first season against Norwich on a Boxing Day or something like that, where even with the not quite the team that I said, but it clicked. Yeah, Jim Jim Brennan was starting to oh, really I love Jim motor Brennan. Matty on the right side. You know, oh, Louis Jean was we, fantastic. So we played a diamond, you know. So our fullbacks were into it. Yeah, and uh, but we're talking about Darren. So so. We had to get Ward, and I remember in that first season, and Wardy would ping it out left or right, yeah. and I, he, I could see him going shh, <laughs> over flying over Jim Z, and I'm going, I'm going <laughs> do it again, <laughs> do it again, <laughs> <laughs> and you know, but don't chase that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no. But you know. I, if I'm going to ask him to do it, I have to stay with it. Yeah, and yeah, he yeah. did it, you know. And he, because you can imagine the courage it takes to, to to make a mistake and then go again. And he was up for it, you know. And that was that was the sowing the seeds. And then the second season when you know, and then Dawson comes in, oh. where he hits his big diagonal to Jim Brennan. And, oh man! But that was that was worked on. That was that was a training drill that we worked on, you know. And um, and sometimes I remember it now. Dawson would get it. And he ping it, and the first touch Brennan had of it was yeah. crossing the halfway line on a volley, on a <laughs> control on a volley, and his next touch was in the box. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it was frightening. Phenomenal. It was fantastic. I had a season to get in the upper <laughs> trend in those years, mm. and you really appreciate. You talk about D Dawson's balls now. For a better phrase. <laughs> no, <you> I, mean, <laughs> I can see that. I can, that brought back a specific memory of of, of balls like that. And yeah, I, I was I became obsessed with Ricky Schimmerker in that period. Yeah. He was incredible. It was the first time really since the Frank Clark years 
And that's supposed to be fair, Dave Bassett and the promotion was fantastic. Probably since then, the Forest felt really exciting mm. again and really felt that, that there was a rebirth and the football was great. There wasn't, a, there weren't, a, I mean, you were looking through the, through the team sheet. There, was no, there were no bad players in that start. You had such a great quality of player and then got Huckabee on loan towards the end of that season. Wow. Who just turbocharged the whole thing? I remember that week where we beat Derby and Norwich in the same week, and I just thought we're go- we're yeah. definitely going up now. You could just yeah. it felt at that point inevitable. I mean, for you, it must be so hard to to encourage the players to be ambitious, but simultaneously try and keep a lid on it all. Was there a point at any point of that season where you thought actually I think we will go up? I'm not a thinker like that. You know, I, don't, I I've never allowed myself either as a player or anything to to get too far ahead. You know, yeah. because I think as you get experience, you know, you, you know, you, you witness or you, you, you know, you, you witness a kick in the nuts and, you know, and, and you know, it's only around the, just around the corner. Yeah. I wouldn't like people to think he's taking his foot off the pedal, you know, and it's all the opposition as well to think, yeah. oh, you know, he thinks he's, he yeah. thinks he's there already. That's Let's right. go and show him. That's right. And I, you know, I kept the, I kept the hammer down with the lads, you know, yeah. and, and when you play like that, you know, putting the ball at risk all the time it's highly pressurized for the players mm. you know because they can make you know they've got to get used to me not berating them when they make a mistake it, putting the ball at risk do you know what i mean yes because i'm asking them put the ball at risk god i'd have loved to have played for you yeah. goodness me that's your sort yeah. of style isn't it <sighs> not yeah. off yeah. yeah when we've watched game when we went to that sheffield wednesday game together earlier this season that's exactly the sort of thing that you want to watch in it yeah yeah and, that, and as a player that would have suited you yeah, I mean, I, I went through quite a few teams where the structure was, especially when you drop down the leagues, it mm. becomes, to, in order to get out of the leagues, I understand why they do it. And this, it becomes really strict, almost Bassett-like, you know, mm. you, there are certain routes out mm. of Division 2 or Division 1. Um, and I think, I, I genuinely think the last time I felt that level of freedom was at Forest um, mm. coming through where you were told to be special and express yourself yeah. and um, do what you're in the team for doing. But interestingly enough... The system we played, like a diamond, the diamond. Yeah. Oh, it was so good. Is, hi- is highly structured. Yeah, yeah. Yet, through uh, patience and development, it can look, it can begun to look like it's so fluid. Yeah. That it looks like it's off the cuff. Yeah. And it never is. He had so, so uh, many great players. Yeah. Uh, Reedy, who we've had on air, yeah. and he genuinely didn't believe me when I said I think he's the best player I ever saw play for Forest. Andy Reid has the strongest mentality of anybody I've ever worked with. He seemed to me, and as I say this as a fan of someone who's never played the game, but someone who, I remember playing once, I think, at Carlton Town with some ex-semi-professionals. It was only then I realised the sporting intelligence required to play football, the, the, the positional sense, that the, the intelligence of the game. As a fan watching it, I always thought that Reed seemed like one of the most intelligent footballers in a footballing sense that I'd ever seen. He just seemed to be a step ahead of everyone else, including sometimes his teammates. He just seemed to read the game in a different way. Is that a fair assessment, do you think, or is that just me being no, misty-eyed? No, I think so. And as he as he got older, he uh, he he used that even more. I remember seeing him uh, when I was at Charlton. I was academy manager at Charlton. And he came down and he ran it. He ran the game from midfield. Just ran it. You know, so I think Reedy may have been getting towards 30 or something then. He just ran the game. He was the best player on the pitch by a million miles. He was great. I mean, as a, as a strike partnership, and we shouldn't overlook Jack Lester, it was superb. No, but no. DJ and Marlon as a, as a duo really have gone down in Forest history now. It's one of the great all-time strike partnerships. Yeah. Well, David Johnson scored one of the best goals. Probably the best goal. I, I tell everybody, I saw him at Berry the other week and I said, do you remember that goal, the goal against Ipswich? And it, it was a long kick, caught him on the break, a long kick from Darren Ward, out of his hands, <laughs> out of his hands, and it bounced once, right? right? So it went over the centre-backs, and the keeper's coming out, feet up and everything, and David just launched himself like like Superman <laughs> and dived at the ball and headed it in, and the keeper's coming at him like that, and it, it was the bravest goal I've ever seen. He, he could have taken one in the mush, anything. And Marlon responded to... To uh, David, and when we lost David in the in the season after mm. the playoffs, uh, when he, he he broke his leg against Sheffield United, I think we lost Marlon to a degree as well because it, uh, David had an influence on him. Yeah, you know, and uh, and Marlon 
may have not recognised it, but he, but he, he responded to it. You know, that's I mean, there's some, there's some amazing game. The, the Palace game, we beat him. Oh, Stoke, sorry, we beat Stoke six 0 Oh yeah. yeah, and Marlon scores four. Yeah, <laughs> it was just incredible. The season was absolutely bonkers. I remember the last home game of the season against Millwall. I think it was a three all draw, and afterwards. I think we knew we'd got to the playoffs at that point. Yeah. And I remember them playing over the tannoy, ain't no stopping us now. And I remember just sort of <coughs> staying in the stadium until it was almost empty, just looking at the pitch, thinking, the next time I'm here, we could be in the Premier League. Well, it was a tough league, isn't it, the Championship? Yeah. yeah. Uh, always has been, and and it's getting, you know... Getting even harder. It, look, it looks very similar now, doesn't yeah. it? You know, when you look at the bottom half of the Premier League, yeah. you think that the top half of the Championship could yeah. have a right crack at them. Yeah. Yes, yeah. definitely. It was some of the best football we've ever seen up for it. I mean, in terms of games that I really remember, the semi-finals, both legs, particularly the home leg, I mean, that's the atmosphere at the city ground. I don't know if it really struck you as different to the rest of the season. The noise was incredible, the entire game. Yeah. And when DJ scored, which I think came from a long ball from, it might have been Dawson or, yeah. or someone in the back, and a phenomenal finish. When the ball hit the back of the net against Sheffield United at home, let alone being 2 0 up in the second game, but that was when I just thought we, we, it felt like we were pretty much there at that point. Well, Michael Dawson got sent off, if you remember. Yeah, God. And yeah. it was one of his first games, that referee that's gone to Saudi Arabia. And he should have gone then. <laughs> <laughs> he, uh, uh, what's his name? Clattenburg. Ah, that's Clamber. right. So that's right. Michael Dawson committed his first foul in the something like the 67th minute. Yeah, yeah. And that was it. That was his first foul, and he got sent off. But you know, in the in the second leg, John Thompson came in and did. I thought John, oh, I thought Thomas was absolutely magnificent, and we changed the way we played. I don't know if it was a subtle change, but I don't know if you noticed because uh, Neil Ward could never work out how to play against us in a diamond. Yeah. I remember one time he had his centre forward chasing our. Our right back. <laughs> to the <half> way, I <laughs> You're sat there. What's, <laughs> go, what's going on here? He hadn't got. He, he couldn't work it out. But we started four four two, and we went. Yeah. He expected us. You know, he would have set up to play a high press and try and take yeah. the ball off us. So we were two 0 up in in no time because then yeah. we're boom boom. We're going in on a on a on a, a percentage type football. Yes. You know, and uh, if we could have just held out. Uh, there's a few tired legs and stuff like that, you know. But but even in in um, at the death, we had, we must have had about six chances I know, I know. Uh, to score, you know. And um, I was really proud of the boys, you know. It's um, it was devastating not to go up, oh, no, not to Reedy. go to the final. Sorry, but um, you know. Yeah, Marlon and Reedy when they when they were on the show, you know, we we're ha having a laugh and all that. And then we, when we came onto this, obviously, mm -hmm. inevitably. The tone just, there's still heartbreak there. Yeah. There's, there's still yeah. something unsaid and unwritten. But what they all say, Prutz, Marlon, DJ, Reedy, everyone That's that we've it, had yeah. on of that era, says that they genuinely, on the coach on the way back, they genuinely felt they were part of something that was going somewhere. Mm. That they thought, you know what, this is inevitable now. We will go up probably mm. next season, maybe automatic. And then obviously things things didn't go that way. Things got dismantled. And it probably seems well, one of the great tragedies in recent it, history. It was. It was. It was. I got presented with a, a different sort of budget. <sighs> and uh, I was very disappointed. Let's not talk really about the sad times because yeah. that season was so good. In terms yeah. of the players, you had a lot of young, talented people. And, you know, as a fan, I would occasionally see them out in the town. Who was the hardest to manage? Ah. Or well, who was the naughtiest? Oh, well... I think their naughty times came um, when they're in the academy. <laughs> I think they uh, all in the digs. They they, they tell <laughs> they tell me stories now. Uh, they all come up. Oh, I, I love it because there, there was discipline there, but boys, you know, have to be. They have to learn how to grow into men. Yeah. You know, and they have to find their way. And sometimes you discipline them, and sometimes you know, and it's the way forward. And when I discipline, you know, when. You know, when I was angry, I was I was quite angry, and um, but not in a personal way. You know, it wasn't like you do da do da do da. Yeah. It's about behaviours, or this will stop you being a footballer, or but you know, if you carry on like you know what I mean. It was always, and I always tried to uh, line it up with a, a story, so that you know, 
if you're at Old Trafford and you're controlling the ball like that, you'll be in a laughing stock or something like that. Mm. You know what I mean? When there's about 75,000 on and you, you're trying to bring it out the sky like Ronaldinho and all that. To control the ball like Paul Scholes. <laughs> so, <laughs> anyway, all those, you know, so it's like, and, and, um, and of course, boys will be boys. And, you know, but it was all about them. You know, every coach, you know, you speak to Charlie or yeah. anybody that worked for us, it was about, it was was about the players and their how they're going to produce, you know, be a footballer, and the best way of getting them there. You know. Do I my my timeline's a little off here? I I remember you being around when John Perkins was the youth team manager. Well, I came in for a year after I got the uh, sack at Chesterfield. Yeah, the gaffer uh, he he rang me one. I, I kept asking uh, Brian. That's the first time I've called him that. <laughs> so, uh, the gaffer, I kept asking the gaffer, uh, gaffer, I said, boss, will you put me in for this job? And all that sort of stuff. And one night, so he'd had about two months of this, and one night, Sunday night, he rang at 10 o'clock, I got a phone call. Centre off. <laughs> if you're as good <laughs> as I keep telling all these clubs, you better come and work for me. So he got me off the streets for... Um, a year and gave me 100 quid a week. It was brilliant. You know, it got yeah. me back in. Because you were just kind of around, I is was, what I remember. I was, I was just general coach. I was yeah. just in there. Yeah. Just, that must have been like, you must, it sounds condescending now, but you must have learned so much just being able to float and kind well, of did, dip in and out. I of did. And, and I, I remember uh, doing a little bit with Roy and, and Teddy Sheringham. I took him off doing a bit of sp wow. receiving and spinning and yeah. stuff like that. And, uh, and they were very generous. The players were very generous and and uh, and respectful, as as you would expect, you know. And but you're dead right. I was I was there for a, yeah. You know. That's I but remember. But then that. then I got uh, through that through me being. I always believe that you get jobs while you're working. You know what I mean? Yes. And uh, I got an invitation from Howard Wilkinson to go into Leeds as academy manager. Yeah. Uh, and that and that the first year there. We won the FA Youth Cup against Man United. It's, it's interesting about Man United. But they we talk about the class of 92. Yes. Right? They never talk about the class of 93 when we beat them 4-2. <laughs> yeah. So you'd, you'd have seen our Forest Youth team at that time and then you'd have gone off to Leeds and... Yeah, because I was around That's Saturday right, yeah. mornings. I was at every youth yeah, team yeah, game. Yeah. I was... I, I opened a sandwich shop in town on Bridlesmith Gate. No way. Yeah. What yeah. was it called? Artist. <laughs> I needed the bread. <laughs> so, a bit cheesy, but never mind. <laughs> so, better than any so, I, would, so I used to, I used to, I used to get up at uh, five, go and go and start the cobs and put all the the, the things wow. on for the bacon, and then I then I go into uh, forest. Brilliant. Yeah. Um, we had a tweet, as I say, so many messages we, we can't get around them all. But Luke O'Reilly on Twitter got in touch, and he says, "Has Paul heard of a man called Dennis Judson?" He was my old design teacher at school, wore a Forest tracksuit every day, told everyone he scouted at Forest and that he knew Paul Hart well. I spent my childhood thinking he was a legend. On reflection, I now believe he may have been lying. Does the name Dennis Judson remember? I, I do remember the name Dennis Judson. Yeah. Oh, I, 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 I can't quite picture him, but I do remember Dennis Judson, yeah, definitely. We had a lovely uh, email from Kevin. So the jury's out on that one. So the jury's <laughs> out, but to be fair, I, 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 think, that, I, think, that, I think Mr yeah. Judson sounds like he was... He's got away with it. He's got away with say. it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, we got a, an email from um, Kevin, who's part of the uh, Forest Supporters Club in Ireland. Uh, he oh. says, I love the podcast, brilliant to listen to, thank you very much. He says, as a, as a member of the Sports Club in Ireland, Paul Hart was fantastic to us in the early noughties. He travelled across the Irish Sea I twice did. to visit us on our end of season dues and was fantastic company. A real gent who was happy to talk about football all night. I also remember him on stage, uh, one of them, singing Eight Days a Week by the Beatles. <laughs> and Goody was too. Maybe I was drunk, I can't remember. Question is... Is this still Hearty's party piece? I also remember at the end of the night, as a few of us stood outside a nightclub, Hearty passed us uh, and slagged us off for not pulling. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, what a great man. Produced one of the most entertaining sides in Forest history and I wish him all the best for the future. So is, is eight days a week your, your party no, piece? No, not Paul? really. I can't remember that. <laughs> man, I can't remember anything. <laughs> After Ten minutes ago was a problem. And here's the thing, you know, so our supporters are always very important, but I actually... When, uh, when David was manager, I actually flew out to the inaugural meeting in Sydney of the uh, Antipodean 
um, supporters club, the first ever uh, get together in Sydney. It was absolutely fantastic. And people came from New Zealand. Big hello to all our Antipodean followers. Oh, yeah. to all our Ant- <laughs> we get listeners all around the world to this. So to yeah. Antipodean, and of course, to the, the, the good lads at the uh, NFC in, in New York, Dan and Carlo, who I met last week when I was in New York. Uh, at the Smithfield Hall. Which oh, thank you like for a... my present, by the way, fellas. Yes, they sent us some lovely uh, lapel badges, beer mats, stickers and everything. Um, so there is forest all over the world, so the saying goes. Now, we're almost done, Paul, but what we'd like to do at the end uh, with our guests is, is ask you the sort of questions you used to get asked in football <laughs> magazines as a player. So, Oh, oh I remember this. <laughs> <laughs> What's your favourite film? Oh. <laughs> this is not when I was a footballer, this is now. This is now, yeah. Right, OK. Um, what about both? Whatever you want. Oh yeah, has well, it changed? I, well, I was trying to think of my list because I, uh, I've got, I've got. Um, it's laminated. Look round his neck. My cousin, my, co- <laughs> no, no, my cousin used to keep um, uh, scrapbooks for me. Oh great! And uh, in it is one of these things, you know, in Football Monthly or, or not Football Monthly, yeah. but the what the, the, the shoot, we, shoot, shoot, yeah. shoot, and it, it puts film favorite dinner. Yes. And I remember saying it was uh, steak and chips. Guinness, and then I thought, oh, should I really say Guinness? <laughs> you know, because in those days you think, you know, people think you have a drink and all that. You know, Cluffy it? put me on Guinness yes, it, at yes. 13 years of age because I was slim. Guinness. I've got to be honest, my dad, my dad, Love it. my dad, who was a footballer, uh, uh, said, you, you ought to have a, a, a bottle of Mackison. Uh, when I started playing at 17 at Stockport County, have a glass of Mackison. You know, there, there was... Because they said there was iron in it and That's, all that. Stuff. Yeah. I also had sherry and eggs and all that. Sherry and eggs. Yeah, <laughs> sherry and eggs. So, so you put a sherry and then you just crack an egg in oh, it. And crap. Then, oh, <laughs> oh my god! I really don't know what that was supposed to do. But I will tell you about my. First, I know we're going off piece a little bit. <laughs> I will tell you about uh, my very first um, pre-match meal. Uh, it was for Stockport County, yeah. right, at Scotch Corner. I think we were playing uh, Darlington. And we stopped at Scotch Corner and presented with this huge <laughs> fillet steak. Oh, this, this is about 12 o'clock. Wow. Huge fillet steak on toast. <laughs> now, the only thing I can say is Ooh. that everybody in the country must have been having fillet steak on toast so it'd equal out. You're probably we, we still digesting know, that yeah, now. We now know that it takes about two days <laughs> yeah. for us to fillet steak to... Oh, so you, you go out, you think, oh, I feel knackered. <laughs> You've got a big lump hanging out of your shorts. Oh, so my God. <laughs> terrible. Um, anyway, film. Favourite film. <laughs> Favourite film. Back right. then, now. Back, na- back then, The Sting... Excellent Ooh, yes. film, great soundtrack. That might be the best one yeah. so far, it's my by the way. Yeah. Film, and 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 now um, Gladiator. If that's the oh, name, yes, yeah, really good film. I, I really, oh, I could watch that. And you know this what? Inspires me. That's brought back a memory. Oh. You had Forrest come out to that music. See, there you I go. Did. I did. I did. I did. I did. I did. Oh my god! I I felt I felt great oh, when that music. Man. I could have gone and smashed somebody when I was on that. <laughs> I remember hearing yeah. that for the first time at the forest ground yeah. and thinking, what it is, is this? Brilliant. And I remember finding out that it was the... And I, I had to hunt high and low to try and get yeah. hold of it. Yeah. And I found it on some rugby CD because it had been used for some Rugby World yeah. Cup. Was, oh, man, that music was yeah. incredible. Yeah, that was it. Do you remember it? No. God, it was... It created... Yeah, it, it, it's, oh, like, it's like they man. go, and it goes to the charge. Oh, you know, burr, 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 wow. Burr, that's it, that's it. Oh, my God. There's oh, a lot of testosterone in this room right now. Play it, Matt. <laughs> <laughs> so we've just been told that... I remember Dennis. But... Dennis Judson yeah. worked at Forrest as yes. an educational officer and, and actually received awards on the club's behalf yeah. at the Football League Awards in, in 2013, so as recently as that. Wow. So Dennis Judson, we, his story checks out, and actually he was far more integrated in the club than we thought. Judo. We, judo, if you're listening. <laughs> we, we, had an amazing, we had an amazing educational department, and the education office, I don't know if you remember, but it was, oh, oh, this is an interesting story, because yeah. it was, but it was actually opened by the Duke of Edinburgh. Oh, wow. In, I think it was 2000, and Andy Reid actually play guitar as part of the opening ceremony. Brilliant. No way. Yeah. Would you play some old protest songs? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I didn't, say, I didn't say that. <laughs> Almost I, it wasn't me. I didn't say that. So, uh, favourite artist or band? <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, well, I do like... Um, 
Neil Diamond. Oh, of course. Uh, uh, but there was um, Santana. Oh, lovely. And um, and I like, what do you call it? Bruce Springsteen. Oh, Springsteen. oh now we're talking. Mm. Massive Springsteen fan. Mm. You've seen him? You ever seen him live? Never. No. Oh, it's it's it's, it's incredible. A religious I, experience. I, I, it's phenomenal. So I haven't done concerts for an, an awful long while. Mm. I, I'm, my, my daughter became a musical theatre actress, so I was like, I've gone to a lot of musical theatre stuff, which Great. again, I love, you know, but... Um, but no, I. I, you I, ha- I mean, if he if he's over, you have to. Yeah. Go, you know. Yeah. Well, I heard somebody was telling me the other day about uh, he was on for a solid three hours. Three and a half right. hours. No, no, no support acts. Yeah. Right? yeah, just three hours. And yeah. on, he's he's pulling uh, cards out of the crowd and like, yeah. come on, boys, we're going to play. Yeah. You know, yeah. Sherry, darling, here yeah. we go. Yeah. One, two, three, and off they go. Yeah. I've not like, seen anything. I was something. Oh, mate, it was unbelievable. It was yeah. Out of this world, the steam was rising off him because it had rained all day. So it looked like he was on fire. It's one of the most incredible things I've ever seen. You know, I, I've been to many, 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 many gigs, right? I, I stood there, the two times I've seen him, I've stood there watching, realised that I've got tears streaming whilst I'm, I'm smiling, yeah. I'm yeah. singing, I'm crying all at once. Oh, for man. like an hour an hour at a time, just song, like track, the track. It's unbelievable, honestly. Absolutely mind-blowing. Yeah. He's brilliant. And Fantastic. then the final question, to bring it back to Forrest, who was your best mate at Forrest as a player? Oh, I think it, it's, you know, what I was saying earlier before we came on, that uh, the fact that we all keep in touch. Yes. I mean, Robbo, I never played with Robbo. Ro- I, I arrived, remember the story, I arrived on mo- the Monday, Tuesday I arrived here, yeah. and we had a, a game against Knox County in that county senior cup or something, and John Robertson left a day later. <laughs> <laughs> And I always thought it was me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Paul Harty, it's been an absolute honour having you here. Thank you so much for joining us. Brilliant. And, thank you. And uh, thank you very much, all of you, for listening. Don't forget, you can email us, rrd1865 at outlook.com. Follow us on Twitter, at rrd1865. And if you can, subscribe, share on your social media, tell your friends about it, leave reviews. It helps other Forest fans uh, find us. But for now, Paul Hart, thank you so much. Thank you. Cheers. Cheers.